Aurora Records proudly presents the unsuccessful sexual misadventures of Lester Truman. It was the first day of spring. She broke my banjo string. Until the last day of fall, I could use my cock and balls again. That's never happened to me before But if you give me five more minutes Would you like to have some more? The unsuccessful sexual misadventures of Lester Truman Now available from Aurora Records It's Tim Henman at Wimbledon all over again Cause I never get past a semi when I'm with a lady friend. It is officially December, and uh, let's face it, 2021 is probably like that much better than 2020. Um, so what better way to sort of celebrate, see off this shitty year, than to think about the greatest meal a person can have in the entire calendar year and you don't have to restrict yourself because we're not traditionalists but Christmas Day meal with your loved ones with your kids with your friends with your family with the people who you fucking hate it don't matter it's still an amazing occasion so let's fucking have it for this Christmas come on now the question you've got to ask yourself is have you actually thought about what you're gonna have for Christmas dinner. And if not, what's wrong with you? You may be one of those people who are lucky enough to have visitors, um, or you may be just be having with your family or some close friends. It doesn't matter if you've got some people over, if it's just a few of you, or if it's just lots of you. It's definitely worth thinking about what you're gonna be drinking with your Christmas meal, right? Because you've gone to a great expense, you fucking spend hours in the kitchen putting shit together, you might as well try and pair it with something that works. So, without further ado, let's fucking have it. Before I get started, this is just what I think. If you have your own idea or your own agenda, it's cool. There is no right or wrong answer with when it comes to wine, okay? So once all the presents have been unwrapped, the next step is breakfast, right? And that's the first opportunity to get your drink on. I think that there is no finer Christmas breakfast combination than smoked salmon, scrambled eggs, and a mimosa. Back home we call it Buck's Fizz. It's essentially sparkling wine mixed with a bit of orange juice or the juice of your choice. Blood orange is nice actually. Which leads us to our first wine purchase, bubbles. Now, I think that you need a little bit for breakfast and a little bit just before dinner, but we'll get onto that in a second. So to start with your mimosas, um, you can use champagne, you can use Prosecco, you can use Carver, you can use Blanc de Blanc, what I'm drinking right now. Natural wines for me are pretty hit and miss, but the more of the hits are with the sparkling. Actually, Asti's quite a good shout. Look, there's, there's heaps of sparkling wines you can go for. I will say one thing though, when you go to buy your wine for Christmas and you're looking at bubbles, um, try and steer away from that kind of rap video champagne shit. You know the ones I mean. It's massively overpriced, it's massively overhyped, and uh, it's driven uh, by market forces, external market forces is why it's so expensive, mainly, you know, like fucking bell ends and fucking rap videos. You think that it's like cool to drink XYZ brand. So, you've been in the kitchen for a while now, cooking up a bit of a storm. You're about half hour away from serving up. Um, that's when you crack out the bubbles again, for my opinion. So if you've got some leftover Prosecco, or Blanc de Blanc, or Natural, or Champagne, or Carver, or whatever, 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 um, serve it up, go around the room, top everyone's glasses up, and you try and, try and time it so that when everyone's sitting down, they've got a little bit of sparkles left in, and You'll sit down, you raise a toast, cleanse the old palate. Mmm! Right, what is for dinner? So, you've gone with a bird, have you? Fair play, most people do. With such an iconic roast dinner, you're going to want to pair it with an iconic wine, and there's nothing more iconic or more fitting um, than a Chardonnay, or, if you want red, Pinot Noir. This is gonna give you an opportunity. It's a really cool opportunity too. Pinot Noir and Chardonnay grow together. If you know of a region that makes a really good Chardonnay, 
You bet your bollocks to a barn dance, they're gonna make a really good Pinot Noir too. A good example of that is Burgundy, very famous for both Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Uh, Loire Valley is another old world region you might wanna look at. A little bit of a left field one would be Alsace. They do really, really good Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. For New World, you wanna look at California, so uh, Sonoma, uh, Napa Valley, uh, again, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir from both of those regions. Oregon is really good. Outside of the States, um, New Zealand, Central Otago does amazing Pinot Noir. It's completely different, it's really earthy, it's really, it's a lot more thicker. You won't think it's a Pinot Noir, it's one of my favourite drinks. Tasmania, man, fucking slept on. But like, if you want affordable, but like old world style uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, Honestly, Tasmania, because it's a cooler climate, make beautiful, beautiful wines down there. I think if you're entertaining and you've got some people who want white and some people want red, I would go Pinot Noir Chardonnay for, for a bird. Um, and 100%, to make it fun, try and keep it in the same region. Le Ross Beef. I tell you what, it's easy to fuck up and it's very hard to nail, but top top dish very uh, a very accomplished chef you would be to have a crack at uh, doing a roast beef on Christmas Day roast beef is a big hearty dish and the veg that really pair well with it are big and earthy and hearty too so really it stands to reason that you want a big big bold wine to go with it um, and you think that you'd be limited when it comes to white but they've actually got a lot of options and I'm not gonna go for Chardonnay I'm gonna go for Viognier it's robust and sort of sweet and sort of um, not, but not sickly but it really stand up to the beef uh, and obviously for a red, ah, Shiraz, man. Barossa make amazing Shiraz, but you can get some great examples of that uh, all over the new world. Not Syrah, I'd keep it with Shiraz. You want to think of big, big, thick, heavy monsters. Um, so Viognier and, uh, yeah, Cabernet Sauvignon or Shiraz. Ah, pig's ear. You've gone with pork, good choice. I often think when you're pairing wines with food, it's just best to use kind of common sense. If you've got a big tomato-y pasta, then obviously a Chianti or a Barolo or, or an Italian red's gonna go really well with that. To the same degree, if you think of pork, uh, you think of applesauce, you think of cabbage, you kind of think Germany, right? Nothing is more German than a good glass of Riesling. Riesling is such a complex grape and, and it has such an interesting history. It's actually been, a bit of a bugbear of mine to not been able to really put together a 10 minute video about it. I definitely will do one going forward, I just don't know how to approach it because it's quite a lofty subject. If you're looking at old world Riesling, Mosul Valley, Alsace obviously, uh, New World I'd recommend Eden Valley and Clare Valley. Riesling kind of goes from incredibly dry to incredibly sweet. The temptation would be there for you to kind of go bone dry with your roast pork. I would go for the one just above it, off dry. For a red wine to go up against pork, I'd be looking at uh, Primitivo, uh, otherwise known in the New World as Zinfandel. Uh, it's got a kind of an earthy, rustic characteristic, which will go really well with the pork. If you look at it, Primitivo, obviously Italian for the Old World, uh, but if you want to venture into the New World, California, uh, under the name of Zinfandel, do some great offerings. Lamb. One of my favourites. I'm going to be a bit controversial with this one. I think most people would probably say Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc or Pinot Grigio. I'm going to scrap white wine. I'm going to go rosé. I just think the kind of combination of rosé wine and roast lamb is a fantastic combination. Obviously you can get great rosé from any region in the world, old or new. Um, but if you're going to do it, I'd do it properly. Go to Provence, get that real pale rosé. Uh, and again, it's just simply a matter of either looking on the shelf or asking your merchant, um, can you give me a good recommendation for Rosé de Provence? With reds and lamb, it's not too dissimilar from beef. Uh, you'll be looking at big monsters again, so Shiraz, Cabernet Sauvignons. Um, but I would go for Sangiovese, otherwise known as Chianti. If you're in Tuscany and you're looking at a menu, there's often just a page dedicated to big roast meats. And in Tuscany, you exclusively drink Chianti. So, you know, stand on the shoulder of giants. Sangiovese every day. Take time to look at the colour. I wax lyrical about it, but take time to look at the colour. If you are a veggie, I salute you. Keep up the good work, sir. Um, and you're going all veg roast dinner. I would recommend something like an Albarino. 
It's one of my favourite whites. I've been meaning to do a video on it for such a long time. And when I did my SOM exam, um, it was essentially three days of drinking hundreds of wine, obviously not ingesting all of them, um, and you know, tasting them, sampling them, writing down notes and sort of getting a bit of an idea. And then I, you, know, you do your test and you kind of you know, have to answer questions based, based upon certain sort of profile notes and characteristics, etc. Um, on the last day, when I went, um, when I finished my exam and I did the test and I passed, I uh, went to bed that night and when I laid my head on the pillow, I thought of Alberino. Mainly because it's one of those great examples of wine being a, a, a sort of a sort of gateway to travel. And what I mean by that is that Alberino is kind of grown off the coast of Portugal and Spain. And it literally tastes of the ocean. There's that salty quality to it, which is just intoxicating. So if you're a veggie and you are taking a moral stance against not eating meat, um, that is my gift to you. Buy a bottle of Alberino. It would also go really well with fish. The red option for a Christmas veg dish, I would say, would be a Malbec, because why the fuck not treat yourself to the, one of the finest wines ever known to man? You rarely get a bad bowl, it'll always leave the crowd happy. Absolute fucking champion of a wine. So you got with a bit of fish? Lovely. Um, Chenin Blanc for the whites. Uh, try Loire Valley or even South Africa. Uh, but it's a really good accompaniment with fish. Obviously Chardonnay um, is a really popular one, but try Chenin Blanc just to be a little bit different. If you wanted to be a bit more kooky, you could go Hunter Valley Semillon. Um, again, remember we did a video on it before. Uh, it's somewhere between Sauvignon Blanc and Chardonnay, depending on where you get it aged. So uh, if you're having fish, it's a really, really good, uh, versatile uh, white wine. For red, I'd go with Beaujolais. It pairs incredibly well with fish because it's incredibly similar to white wine. A lot of people who prefer white wine actually really enjoy a glass of Beaujolais. Failing that, if you wanted to go for something a bit bolder, Merlot goes really well with fish. So you've gone with prawns. Very Australian of you. If you've got those big, juicy, garlicky prawns, garlic's best friend is Sauvignon Blanc. In this current period, you will pick up some really, really good affordable Sauvignon Blanc. Winemakers who are kind of in the know, they, they, you know, they've experienced the lull because you know, of the, you know, the, the Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc effect, uh, and now they're kind of making really nice and interesting Sauvignon Blancs. If you've got a big garlicky prawn dish, Sauvignon Blanc just belongs in the glass. It fucking like, mm, goes together like this. Like, shamalama lama lama dippy di ding dong and if you've got prawns on your plate, then no other option than a big, beautiful, smoky Rioja. Goes so well with prawns. If you can't be asked to do any of this, and you just want a white and a red, just to sort of stick down a plunk on the table, and the chips fall where they may. Or, in fact, if you're a guest on your way to someone's Christmas dinner, and you want to take a nice white and red, the two options are very, very simple. The go-to white, king of kings, is Pinot Grigio. I don't give a fuck what you say. The colour is sensational. The fucking aroma is so peachy and beautiful and it never fails to deliver. It is the most consistent wine, in my opinion. And on the dark side of things, the red of reds, for me, and opinions are like arseholes, because everyone's got one, Tempranillo. I never, never, have a bad bottle of Tempranillo. It is the most consistent red there is, in my opinion. Um, always have a bottle of Tempranillo lying around. It's just the bottom bitch of wines for me. I hope that that has provided you with some food for thought. Excuse the pun. Uh. Christmas dinner should be the best meal of the year because it should be spent with the people you love. So enjoy yourself. These are very tough times, people. Get your pleasure while you can. It was the first day of spring She broke my banjo string Until the last day of fall I could use my cock and balls again Her name was Agatha And it was like Opening the curtains to fuck the night 
handshake of a man who's about to die Feeding tic tacs to a whale Like warm water in a bowl Throwing a sausage down the hall 